Okay. Let's rock and roll, everybody. Here we go. And this is a two-day session. If you can't make it to the second day, uh, you know, as they say in my home country, I'm sorry for your luck. Uh, I'm going to try to convince Jeffrey to record both of these and put them in my learning so that you can reference them back again. Uh, try is, is the key word there. So try to pay attention. I'm going to go fast and furious. I'm going to give you a lot of resources today. Uh, but there is going to be a lot to do on your own as far as as far as, uh, you know, I'm going to give you the tools, then it's up to you to like take those tools and run with them and create. We can't do everything in class because uh, a little bit about me, like I've taught the, the ABR class, the accredited buyer representative for those that might have that designation or have heard of it. I teach that for NAR. It's a two day class, 15 hours. So what I'm trying to do is highlight 15 hours into three. Okay, I'm giving you the meat and potatoes because that's what I like. I don't want all the fluff. So you're not going to get any of the fluff at all. Okay, so my goal is to make you a super buyer's agent, right? Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love what you do or what you're learning to do. Like, I feel like in order to be a really great buyer's agent, you need to be possessed. And what I mean by that is like, you're, you're relentlessly working towards your goal every day. If you have free time, uh, you're a new agent, guess what? You have time to know everything there is to know about the market. Social media is great. I, like I teach that to you all, right? But you have time to learn the market. So if somebody goes, how's the market? Well, if you're a buyer who's looking to buy in this market, list price to sale price ratio is 118.9%, right? I met two un unrepresented buyers on Saturday over the weekend. Um, couple and they were both like oh how's the market boom i hit them with that you know we're still getting multiple offers on average and it's 18.9 percent over asking wow and then i hit them with some more statistics They're like you know so much about real estate i'm like well i'm an expert what would you expect and i laughed and they laughed and i said who have you been working with you know oh we've been just calling agents off oh, uh don't you think it's time to commit to somebody that's really good and i gave them like a couple winks and they were like yeah i think you're right Okay, so it's like being able to build rapport and explain that, look, it, we're not just realtors, we're resilient, we're relentless, and we're resourceful, right? Those are the three R's I think that go along with the capital R. Uh, if you don't know about me, I do love technology, fascinated by the future. I, I play with AI in my spare time. This isn't like something like I'm like, oh, this is my job. I love this stuff, okay? And I love changing your lives when it comes to technology and how you work with clients. I, I, I love what was said of like, I want to change the mindset of all the buyers and sellers that we work with. So then they leave that transaction, they go, wow, what a great experience. Not, oh, they just wanted to get a sale, right? Wow, what a great experience. And so let me just, somebody wants closed captioning. There you go. Okay. Um, boop. Okay, coming back. And so, yes, I've won multiple awards, but what I want you to know is that what you should care about is that I'm a real estate agent just like you since 2005. Since 2005, I've been in the business, so that's going on almost, it's 19 years this year, uh, this June. So the things I talk about, it's real. It's not theory. I'm not saying like, I read this in a book or some of your coaches and, and people that you'll see outside of Element, right? They're like, back in 1986 when I sold real estate, nah. I sold real estate yesterday. Actually, today I had an attorney approval on, on a property. So there I am, AI certified agent. Who cares? Uh, my objective is to give you the tools for you to be the best buyer's agent that ever lived. Like, I don't want you to be the best. I want you to be the best buyer's agent that ever lived. Like, let that sink in for a second so that you can realize what we're going to do. Uh, there's a bunch of learning objectives. I'm not going to read all those, right? I'm going to talk about AI benefits for, for consumers. Really, I'm going to help you create your unique selling proposition uh, when working with buyers. We're going to integrate AI into how to uh, integrate AI into how to have conversations. Uh, I've actually created a, if you've, you've all heard of GPT at this time, right? I've created an exclusive buyer's agent expert GPT, which means it's trained on all the buyers 
agent type things. It knows NLP, it knows fair housing, it knows code of ethics, it knows all kinds of things that your brain may not possess yet, and you can ask it anything. Okay, we're then gonna talk a little bit more about embracing modern roles, AI driven service strategy, uh, the virtual presentation, and exclusive rights to represent, create re realistic expectations. Uh, which is by educating them on market realities, positioning you for success, escalation clauses. Uh, if you use them in, in your market, I have real life uh, case studies on how it can work for you or against you and how you might be violating fiduciary duties depending on how you present those. Uh, virtual offer presentations, waiving of inspections. I can't remember the last time I had one, an inspection. Uh, on an offer that was accepted. Maybe it's different in your market, but there are some things that you can do to help reduce the liability, right? Right now, they may go, do whatever it takes. Susie, you do whatever it takes. I know your husband does home improvement. I'll waive that inspection. But five years from now, right? Five years from now when that, that foundation's crumbling or something, they go, hey, Susie, uh, we got a problem with our house. Oh, uh, well, you waived your inspection when you bought it. Uh, you told us to, to get the offer accepted. That's the that's how that conversation is going to go. And unless you have things in writing and things are documented, uh, John's going to be working that one out. Okay. What else? Why be a better buyer's agent? I didn't talk about her hubby, Andy. I talked about him in a factual way, not in a derogatory way. Why? Why should you all want to be a better buyer's agent? What is happening now, or in the last year and moving forward, uh, that we should be better? If, if you don't know, we're going to have to have to ask you to leave, but. The uh, commission issues. The uh, commission Thank you, issues. Gina. Bing, 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 bing. Hold on. Let me see what I'm going to give you. Party, party noisemaker. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the commission, right? It's changing. And here's what I think. Anytime there's change in an industry, for me, it's for the better, right? It's just going to help all of you be better agents now. Because, you know, other companies aren't doing the amount of training that we're doing. I promise you. Call any one of your friends, agent friends at other companies. They're not. So you're going to be better, better buyer's agent because of this lawsuit. Better able to define what you do and, you know, be confident saying, oh, well, how do you get paid? By commission. When we close, here's what it is. Why should we hide from that? What other industry do you know that only gets paid when, we, when they do their job? And at the end, when and only they do their job, right? Imagine if, it's crazy. Okay, so understanding AI benefits. Let's start with developing your AI enhanced USP or UVP, unique value proposition. Uh, how many of you could clearly define what you do as a buyer's agent? Just raise your, nobody wants to raise their hand because they know I'm going to call on them. Susie said like this, she said, it was a half raise, Susie. Okay. Um, so I, I want you to take out a piece of paper if you're doing this or if you're doing it digitally, like if you have another tab open, I want you to start writing out like what are the things that you do that are that's that makes you a better buyer's agent than the next one? What are the things? And it can't be, you know, we have baseline qualifiers where it's like, I'll work hard. I'll be honest. You know, things like that uh, don't even... Put that in there. You know, I have a dog. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. But where you want to start is three E's. Three E's are education, experience, and expertise. So let me give you an example of each one. The first, education. So let's say I went to school for business administration. Does that help me be a better buyer's agent? Yes. But additionally, I have my ABR designation, accredited buyer representative. That means that I went to school, I, I, I took an additional training of 15 plus hours in working with buyers and providing better service, right? All of you can take designations. You can have the alphabet soup like I have after your name. It means nothing unless you can explain that to the client, right? So here's, here's what I do. Now, wouldn't you want when working with somebody who's uh, – you know, helping you find the home of your dreams. Wouldn't you want somebody that took the time uh, for 15 additional hours worth of training and working with you as a, as a buyer? It just makes sense, doesn't it? Or let's say uh, 
you're in a, in accounting or you did something else like all anything you do as far as your education is concerned can apply to to working with buyers if you took the gri designation gri designation is different i see tiffany you were you have your gri right you i think that's how i met you no you don't okay never mind um you're going to no but i have abr i'm going to be no, doing but I have abr ABI I'm going to be doing the GRI. So it, ABI. and the GRI is different in different states, but the GRI is 90 hours worth of coursework, right? So now we're starting to explain, like, here's my difference. And you know what? I'm an associate broker. I'm, I, I'm not just uh, a licensee. Associate broker in my state means an additional 75 hours, and it's the highest form of licensing that I could receive. Okay, then we go into uh, experience. What are you an experienced in? It doesn't have to be real estate. It could be what's your life experience and how does how do you bring that into uh, working with buyers and then your expertise. And I, I always use this example, but I owned a boat. I owned a boat because I'm smart enough to know that I'd rather have friends with boats. Uh, best day is when you when you buy it and when you sell it. Two best days of your life. But when I owned a boat, right? You go around in all the waterways. I know that kind of expertise. I know the deep water. I know where, where sandy beaches are, those kinds of things. So if you're looking to buy a waterfront home, I bring that to the transaction. I know the difference. Uh, I, I know what it takes to get the Army Corps of Engineers to get things approved in our area for, for a dock. And if you're going to put a dock or if you're going to have a boat hoist, those kinds of things, that expertise makes me better, right? If you're a golfer, same thing, right? You know where the golf courses are. You know what golf courses aren't allowing any new members. That's something you would bring to somebody saying, hey, uh, my Florida folks, I know you have waiting lists for your golf courses, you know, and if you have knowledge of where there is one that, that because that's your expertise, right? Education, experience, and expertise. Uh, before I got into real estate, I used to sell alarm systems door to door. So I, I literally walked every street in my county selling alarm systems. Who better to teach you about neighborhoods and why things are better or worse depending on, on where you want to live and what the amenities are, et cetera, than somebody who has gotten out of the car and truly experienced what it's like, like to live in certain areas. Does that make sense? Right? So it's bringing in a lot of your life experience, not just, oh, today's my first day in real estate. I don't feel like I have anything to offer. That's BS. You lived all the way up until this day. Every moment of those of that time, you bring something of value to the transaction. You just have to be able to articulate it. So here's what we're going to do. If you uh, have GPT, let me say this. I should take a poll. Put your digital hand up if you have uh, access to chat GPT because it's going to make a difference in what I do here. One two, three, four. I have the sound set up when people raise their hands and it's fun. It's like, it's a nice sound rather than the chimes when people enter Zoom. Okay, so a handful. This is what I think about a quarter of you. Okay, I'm gonna give you all access. I want you all to go to Claude because that'll be free. Um, or chat that open AI. These are the two sites. I'm going to give you two sites because I want you to start this process today. If, cause if I don't ask you to do it today, what's going to happen? Nothing. You're not going to do it. Uh, Claude.ai. So here's the two better ones. Okay. I, there's bard.google.com as well. Uh, that's not that great in my opinion, but it will be better once they, upgrade to Gemini. All right, so here's- Amen, your... if we have- um, Amen, cause... if we have- um, cause... I'm listening, say it again. Um, we have the buyer one that you um, sent. We have that's... the buyer one that you sent. That's the chat GPT. Does it save it on chat GPT? Or do we do we like save it on chat again. GPT? Or do we do like uh, yeah, so if you again. were on my session where I shared the buyer's agent GPT, uh, that would be a good place to go because the buyer's exclusive, what would I call it? Buyer's agent expert GPT or whatever it is, that's been trained on so many more things than regular GPT. GPT is still great, 
but what I did is I trained it on the real estate knowledge of of antitrust, code of ethics, all those things that we need to make sure that we're following. Okay. So let me do that. I'm going to give you a claw.ai as well. I'll give you three different links then. I have double speakers going. Yeah, I'm echoing. Anybody that speaks is echoing. Yeah, I'm echoing. Anybody that speaks is echoing. Uh, speak again. Again. One, two, three, right test. Forward. Yeah, that's better. There. Okay. See, just communicate. I got you. Um, um, I have a question. Which one is the one that you're, uh, because I missed that class, you're talking about the chat GPT um, for the buyers? I'm going to share that right now here. Thanks. Let me move over to the shared screen. Boop, boop. Okay. So this is the exclusive buyer's agent expert. Uh, for those who are unaware, one of the last updates when it came to open AI is they allow people to create their own GPTs. And so when I say create their own, just think of AI that's already been trained on a specific subject. So you could find travel, recipes, image generators. They have a million of them now, not a million, but a bunch of them now that were created by OpenAI plus other people. Uh, I made mine public. So now at some point, if enough people use it, I think OpenAI will monetize it or something. We'll see. But I'm sharing it with you so that it's a really good resource because- Yeah, that's what I was asking. So there's no way to say- Yeah, that's you... what I was asking. So there's no way to say- It should you... be in your GPTs. Yeah, if you click on it, it's going to go into the GPTs that uh, you like, like your favorite GPTs. It, it, on OpenAI, if you go to the top here, if it, you see mine here, I have that one, but I also have Dolly. I have Image Generator, and I have Explore. Yeah, there's a uh, button that keeps it on the sidebar. Yeah, there's a uh, button that yeah, keeps it on the sidebar. I, yours there's might it. look different than mine because I have an overlay for uh, it's a Chrome extension, which does some extra things for me. Okay, now. Look at, I'm in this one. If it looks the same. Okay, great. So I'm in this one and whoops. What I want to ask is I am Quick question. a real... Sorry, sorry. Quick I, I just want to follow. Sorry, sorry. Uh, my, uh, my says, my says uh, that I need to purchase a plan. Uh, that I need to, you need to upgrade it to be able to see your need to upgrade um, it to be able to see your um, exclusive buyer's agreement. Yes. Yeah. And I, yeah, I promise you, it's worth the twenty bucks a month. I don't even make anything. Oh, no any problem. I have, I have no problem with that. Thanks. Okay. Um, but it will also give you not just access to mine, but all the ones that are out there. So, everybody, if you don't have OpenAI, you could. Create an account now for free and just do it on regular open AI. Okay. Or go to Claude, which is this over here. Okay. But I'll do Ch chat GPT first because I want to say I am a real estate agent of however many years you've been in, in the business, right? Say I'm a real estate agent of 19 years. And then I'm going to hit shift and then I'm going to hit one. Shift keeps you, when you hit enter on your computer or on your, your keyboard, shift keeps the enter from sending the message to the AI. Okay. Keeps it like you, like you see there. So I would love, I would like to to develop my UVP for working as an exclusive buyer's agent. Okay. I'm going to say, what questions can you ask me, me to, to help create that. And spell there and misspell there and I misspelled there. No, UVP is good. Okay. Return. Mm -hmm. 
Let that cook for a little bit. Okay. Absolutely. I'd be happy to help you develop your unique value proposition as an exclusive buyer's agent. Your UVP should be should communicate the unique benefits you provide, differentiate from the competition, and it's going to ask me some questions. So this is the best way for you to help define your UVP is just kind of answer these questions. This is why I love it because sometimes we don't know the questions to ask ourselves. Uh, yeah, Eric, you could use the mic as well. Are you on the mobile version? Is that right? Yeah, the mobile version, you can use the mic. And I don't, if you didn't look at the settings, is it talking back to you with the mic? Yeah, I, I love using the, the mobile because I feel like Iron Man talking to Jarvis is like the coolest thing. And I I've, I've found it, I just want to mention, I found it really positive because you feel like you're having a discussion with someone. I, yeah, it makes it much easier, for sure. Uh, D squared, do you have a question or your hand's still up? No, she doesn't. I'm going to lower her hand. Monica, you good? You with us? Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, so I'm not going through an hand. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you don't have any more. Okay. Uh, so here you see experience and expertise, client understanding and approach, market knowledge, communication and negotiation, client success stories, personalization and additional services, professional values and ethics, client relations. After. So we can't do this now, but this is something for you to reflect on later on. Like take, take a few hours because this is something when you get this down, and you sit with every buyer. This is what we do. This is how. This is what sets us apart from the competition. The better you get at this, the easier the conversions are. Because look, and let me. If nobody's ever told you, sales is nothing more than a transfer of enthusiasm. And the more enthusiastic you are, the more positive you are, the more confident you are. You've heard me say this in role play a hundred times. It's about belief. Like I know that I'm the best buyer's agent for them. Period. If they go, well, why should I pick you? Hey, I don't know. Oh, shit, you just lost them. They're gone. Okay, they're going to go on to the next person that was overly confident. And even if it's your first day, there's no reason why you can't be confident because we're going to train you to do, do it the right way. Act as if. I don't like fake it if you make it. I like act as if. Act as if you've been there before. Okay? And if you're a newer agent, typically you start with uh, buyers. Just kind of the way it works. Okay. Make sure I have it on the right. Okay. So how can we improve as an exclusive buyer's agent? What else could we do? What is the main difference between Cloud AI and, and ChatGPT? Uh, ChatGPT has more capabilities and Cloud.ai right now is free. It's it's updated a little bit. Okay, if, if you're trying to set it up but not but it's not working for you right now, just write down what I the prompt that I told you to put in there. It's more or less uh, I would like to create my unique value proposition. What kind of questions can you ask me to help create that? What kind of questions can you ask me to help create my unique value proposition? You got to remember, this is your assistant that works for you. And if you don't know, this is the one time in your life where you would go to an assistant and go, I don't know, what kind of questions can you ask me so that I can answer that? And it's going to tell you. And you answer them, all of them, one at a time, boop, 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 boop and it gives you what you're looking for. So how can we improve as exclusive buyer's agents? How would you say? This is an open forum now. How can we improve? Get your buyer's, ag get your buyer's agency agreement signed every time? That'd be one way? Yes, what else? Define your unique value proposition. What else? Get better at discovering the inventory, right? Always do a buyer consultation. Absolutely, Gina, right? It's like, would would you go take a listing without doing some kind of presentation? No, I don't think so. Uh, I remember I used to get listings over other people and then they'd be like, what do they come to you with? And they'd say, well, they printed out some comps from the MLS, four or five sheets. That's what they showed up to the listing appointment with. And I'm like, wow, that's unbelievable. Listen, really listen to your buyer. I love that, Patricia. 
Lena says, know the area they are looking into. Absolutely. Um, I think <laughs> I think that's that's most important, right? Uh, when we're in markets like Long Island, right? And somebody says, oh, I want to be in the Hamptons and you're in Nassau County. You should refer that out because you know nothing about the Hamptons, right? Even if it was in, in into Suffolk County. And, you know, I, I look at all, every single market that we're in, I'd rather you say, look, 80% of my business, I'm going to tell you this, 80% of my business comes from the town that I grew up in. 20% is from the people that moved, if they moved out of that town, from the town that they, wherever they moved to. Yeah, gather testimonials from happy buyers and display them or talk about them, right? Nothing uh, tells your story better than success told by other people, right? Here's, here's an experience. Like uh, I have two clients, well, they're a husband and a wife. I sold them their first home 10 years ago, okay? Five years ago, this was like a small starter home. Five years ago, they then built a home using me. I, I represented them with the builder. They kept that first home as a rental. They also at that time bought a three family rental property. So I sold their new construction. They moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. And then I represented them in, in the sale of these multifamilies. Okay. Now their testimonial that I didn't care about the sale that I cared more about the relationship because they said to me, at one point, should we sell our first home, our, our starter home, or should we keep it as a rental, right? It's, you got to think honesty and relationship over transactions, always, right? If somebody's asking you, like, hey, should I rent it? There have been times I go, yeah, you should. You can make some money off of this for a little while at least. Make sure I can give you all the tools to be successful, but don't have commission breath, right? Don't make it about making the sale. Now, one of the things that I've implemented uh, from the pandemic, which is be my internet is choppy. Maybe your internet is choppy. It's not me. It's you. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that from, from the pandemic, it's more normal, right? Pre pandemic, like think of how many times you went on zoom. I was on zoom maybe three times. Now I'm on zoom 600 hours or 600 times, at least a year. I got to look at the numbers. Uh, once we share the numbers for the DE training, you'll be, it's like 83,000 agents have gone through our training in 2023, but virtual buyer presentation. So my first meeting with a buyer or a seller is going to happen right here via zoom. Okay. So if you scan that QR code, that's going to send you to my equipment list so that I don't have to spend time telling you what kind of equipment you should get. But for those of you who aren't on camera, perhaps a better camera. You can get a webcam for 30, 40 bucks, pretty cheap. You go to Best Buy. Okay. Your second investment would be a decent sounding microphone. Okay. Again, you can get something inexpensive, 50 to a hundred bucks that you can keep for a very long time. And then lastly, which I'm not sure you would need is some kind of light. Um, as I look at everybody, everybody's lighting that's on camera is pretty good except for Jill and that Jill, if you turned around and turn and face and face the window, that natural light on your face would, would be perfect. You wouldn't have to buy any additional uh, lights. But the point is if you're going to be on virtual meetings quite often, find yourself a space. I know that that's Susie's space because every time she's on a zoom, she's right there and that's her backdrop. Right. And I know that's Andy's space. Same thing. When she's in the office, she's there. But when she's home, she has a home office. She has a horse behind her, typically uh, two little figurines. Right. And so as you're on more, look at there's Jill. Boom. Look at that. Rock and roll. I like it. Ready to go. Tatiana. I, I would maybe change your background because I'm just just my ADHD. I'm distracted. I want to see what all those little things are. You know, like I'm like, uh, but it's still the lighting is good. The camera quality is good. Uh, so just think about that because our clients will judge us in every aspect of the transaction, right? And what I mean by that, like their initial impression, when somebody, somebody arrives on, on my Zoom, they go into the waiting room just like you all did. But in that waiting room, they would have a customized avatar saying, 
oh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Moisesides. My avatar will say that better than I can. Uh, J-Man will be with you in just a moment. Welcome to his reception area. So I've already set a different level of expertise. I'm not saying I'm good at AI. I'm, I'm showing them that I'm good at AI. Andy, you have a comment question? Yeah, it's a comment. Actually, Best Buy now has a section. I didn't know how to type it in there, but uh, Best Buy has now a whole section where you walk in and they have for for virtual stuff. So they have the mics, they have the video cameras, they have all the stands, the lights, whatever you want. Just walk in there and they have everything. Yeah, and if <laughs> if you don't want to walk into a store, well, no, it's because that way you can test the stuff. That's why I'm mentioning it. So if you don't, if you, that way you test it, and then you go back to Amazon J Man's list, you can order from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they allow you to test it and it's good to see like pros and cons and ask the nerds, they're the geek squad, they're geeks. So use their, use them to use that to your advantage. Uh, but I'm going to put, I'm just going to put this in here as well. That's the entire Amazon shop that has all of the stuff. Okay. But, but let me give you some examples. Sorry, because I think I missed it. So why do we need this mic? The computer audio is not enough, or we just need it specifically yeah, I mean, for AI? Compute no no no. Because good enough is not good enough, is what I'm gonna say, Marco. That's my, one of my favorites. Or should I look like you with the mic in front? Well, you, you you could. It would I don't have blonde hair. We have to let it shoot. Okay, well, shorter. I'm speaking about the no. mic in front. Um, you don't have to, because let's say, if, like, I can bring this a little bit further down and still talk a little bit louder, and it's out out of the, you know. So it is a different look. A lot of people that use this, they do they do it for authority, because if I have a microphone that's a pro level microphone, then in your mind you're going, well, he knows more than the average person in the virtual world because he has a good setup. So what I would I just saying sound quality wise, people will tolerate sub subpar video, but if your sound quality is scratchy or there's static or there's background noise, anything like that, it'll distract from your message and your potential prospect won't be able to pay attention. Right? You know, like for me, every time I, I have a Zoom, there the the lawnmower guy wants to come, right? Or somebody's cutting down a tree. But because I have a noise canceling microphone, you'll never hear that. And that'll never yeah. be a distraction. Right. Okay. Or if you have dogs too. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I, I just wasn't sure why what's the story of the mic, but thanks. You got it. All right. So now when it comes to the to the meetings, right? The virtual presentations, a couple of things I want you to do to kind of level up. Uh if you're using Google Calendar, I would encourage you or some kind of calendar, online calendar. Uh, Google has integrations with Zoom. So if you have a Zoom account, hopefully you all have a license and not the free account, uh, it will integrate so that when I add a, an appointment to my calendar, all I have to do is say, make it a Zoom meeting. See it right there in the lower right-hand corner. I hit make it a Zoom meeting, boop, it adds the Zoom link and everything directly in the calendar invite. This is purposeful so that I wanna make it easy because quite often, I don't have to ask. All of us at some point have been looking for a Zoom link when the meeting's about to start. Like, where is it? I can't find it. It's in my email somewhere. And then you're late. Okay. Now there's also the opportunity to, there's add-ons like Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y, Calendly. Same thing. Automatically will integrate with your Zoom. And the way I do it, this one says J-Man's virtual console conversation. It could be, you know, uh, J man's home buying consult. Okay. And I'll say, Oh, I would love to hop on a zoom with you. You know, here's my link, whatever time is works best for you. I can do. And really what I've done is ahead of time in my calendar, I've set my availability, but I'm not saying like, click my link to schedule something with me. Like I'm super important. I'm saying, you know, schedule whatever time works for you. And I have typically I'll have a morning appointment, a noon, like a midday lunchtime appointment, and then like a later in the day appointment. So you have three options throughout the day, depending on what their schedule is. The last option, Google Calendar just actually updated it and they have a workspace. It, well, they have part of their G Suite. Google Workspace is that they have uh, scheduling with Google Calendar where you can block out times that you're available as well. All of this is meant to streamline the process because you're a professional, right? If you're out showing houses right now and a buyer calls and wants to schedule a consult with you, guess what? 
you shouldn't answer your phone because you're out showing homes, right? But having systems in place that can help them will make you better. Now, virtual offer presentation. Uh, Tiffany, you still here? Where are you? I see you. Uh, when you took the ABR class, did we talk about presenting the offer in person? Do you, who was your instructor? Wasn't me. Wasn't me. You keep. No, I mean, sorry, I keep doing that. I keep going for the video. Um, no, we never talked about that. Roseanne was my instructor. Okay, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I'll say. So when I say offer presentation, it used to be in the ABR course, we would train you to present your offers in person whenever possible. Now, I understand we're, <clears throat> we're in a different world, but anybody that's been in the business, if you've been in the business long enough, put it in the chat where there was a time where I presented my offer in person. I said, and I went through the entire offer from front to back. And then I said, and you know, this offer is good until, and I would write like 15 minutes from then. And I would go out in the car or I would awkwardly go into the basement if there's multiple agents presenting offers, like they would put us all in a, in a certain area where we'd have to sit there like, mm, one of us is gonna win in this scenario. Then they would call us back and it was done, right? It wasn't meant to try to manipulate the seller or you know do thing that's it was meant to get it done seller wants to get an offer accepted we want to we want to sell the home rather than you write an offer this these days right you write an offer and what do you do you wait until the next day or you give them you give them 48 hours because they say the seller's out of town it's the world wide web you don't tell me anybody you can't get a hold of in 24 hours or less right but if i can't present it in person i can do something uh a virtual offer presentation and after we break let me see if oh here it is it's gonna play over here one second put it on my other screen okay I'll show you an example hi Fallon this is Jeremiah it's J Man Monero with the Monero team at Remax Realty Group uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to submit this offer. Uh, I just want to explain some of the important details of our offer, uh, starting with our pre-approval. Uh, my client is pre-approved. She has submitted all of her documentation to ESNL. Uh, she's approved up to up and close to three hundred fifty thousand actually, but she's going to be putting twenty to twenty-five uh, percent down, so seventy-five percent loan to value. I don't see any issues with appraisal there, uh, but she is working with Sue Downs over at ESNL. Okay. Second of all, uh, she uh, we are looking to do an inspection, but it is for our information only. It's not even a contingency in the contract. Uh, we understand a uh, great home. We don't see any issues with it. Uh, but she is a first-time home buyer, and she just wants to make sure she can budget for the right things for replacement if necessary. Uh, the closing date that we've written in there, roughly 60 days. Uh, we could possibly do it sooner, depending on title and survey work, uh, or it could be longer. Uh, my client uh, is flexible in their living situation. So if it needed to be three months or four months, if that's better for the seller, uh, that could certainly be, be arranged. Uh, in regards to my client's employment, she is gainfully employed. She has director uh, level position at the University of Rochester. So she has little or no chance of getting laid off, furloughed, fired, or anything that would okay. be of concern. <clears throat> Um, I don't know. My sword is only one edge, Andy. He, and here's what, why you put, why you say that, but here, here's what I want to explain. So love letters you may have heard of are frowned upon. A love letter would be like somebody writing a letter to the seller saying, dear seller, my husband and wife, or, you know, my husband, and I, my husband and wife, but that's a weird relationship. My husband and I uh, really love your home. Our kids uh, were running in the backyard and it was it's walking distance to the synagogue. And you know, I have a number of fair housing violations just in the first few sentences, right? Familial status, gender, religion, right? All these different things. Now, did you hear any way in, in that video for them to discriminate against my client? Besides, I said she, and they knew it was a she because her name was Emily. I would have guessed that it was a she. Not to say that that's 
was her pronoun. Okay, we'll go there. Did that make sense? Right, I said, I said, you know, the amount of money she was putting down, I said that she was pre pre committed, really, she she went to Sue Downs, who was the number one loan originator for this bank in our area. And then I talked about where she worked, because that's important. Right? Employment is not a protected class. If they are a fireman, a policeman, uh, some, you know, they have little or no chance of getting laid off. That's important. Right? I think that's something you should highlight. What are the good things? And then when it's not just price, but there's also terms and conditions. And that's where I mentioned like, hey, we'll, we can close it in 30 days. Or if your seller wants more time, we can do that because my client's uh, renting on a month to month. Yeah. That, and, and again, look at, I'm copying my client in on this email. So what does my buyer see? The buyer sees, damn, he is going above and beyond. I'm doing everything I can to get the offer accepted. She goes into the, because you know what happens? Everybody goes to work the next day and they go, oh, Alex, how, how's that house hunting going? And he goes, oh, yeah, we lost another one. Oh, yeah, what, what happened? Well, my agent faxed it over or emailed it over, and I just heard today. Your agent emailed it over? Did he do any kind of video or anything to present? No. Why, did yours? Oh, yeah, my agent did a cool video. Check this out. I've had agents show, or I've had buyers show the video to people at work to, to show, like, my agent's better than your agent, Nan Nana Boo Boo. I made a great choice and you didn't because people brag like that. Okay. Especially when it comes to real estate and buying big things, right? Think about when people buy a really nice car, they talk about the whole experience. Okay. Go back over here. <laughs> Alex woke up. What's up, Alex? Hey, what's up, man? Oh, no. I've, I've been on. I'm just driving. So it kind of sucks that I'm not at my computer, but. Um, I don't know if I missed it, the email client that you use to send those video emails, which one is that? Because I use Studio Bomb Pro. Bomb. Oh, oh, it's Bomb Bomb. Okay. That's what yeah. I want to tell that. Thanks. It's Bomb Bomb, uh, but you could also use, it's bombbomb.com for those of you, B-O-M-B, B-O-M-B.com. Uh, the other option, which is which will integrate with many CRMs, is Dub, D-U-B-B, Dub.com. Uh, I'll give you the link before we're finished here. It's in the next few slides to get free trials. All right. The other uh, uh, just a quick follow up yeah. question, my man. So when you're using Bomb Bomb or Dub, because I've used Dub before, when they click on it, it still takes them to another screen, right? Yeah, it takes them to a landing page where the where the video is hosted. Uh, and what I like about either of them is that you could email it, you can text it, you can send it in Facebook Messenger, you can send it in Instagram DM. But on the back end, I know when it's played. So if I send it to you and I go, Alex, hey, could you play this for your clients? There's nothing in here that's love letter uh, adjacent or is, you know, nothing protected class you have to worry about. You can watch it first if you'd like, but it just has important information that I would like the seller to see that will help them make uh, a decision on my clients. Yeah, Roger that, man. Thanks. Yeah, and, and it's all in the presentation. Like, Will you, some of you get opposition to this because you have agents in your market that are buttheads? <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to trouble for saying that. Yeah, you might. Somebody like agents that have been in the business. No, I'm not doing it. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much. But you tried, right? The, the point is that you're putting forth effort and your client sees it. Will you get pushback? Yeah, of course. Okay, now the next part of this is keeping, you want your offer depending, I know like downstate in New York, you you, you don't write contracts. Um, I'm not sure in, in other markets. Upstate New York, we fill in the blanks of a contract. But the point is every part of it, I want you to put into a nice, beautiful pack, right? So I'll have my purchase contract, my addendum, so all the things, the pre-approval, and then I put a cover sheet on the top of it because everything I do is in comparison to other agents. Right. If there's multiple offers and mine looks like a pretty wonderful, um, you know, contract, it's it's everything's nice and even I have a nice cover sheet and and it highlights all of the things. Right. Price to be determined, escalation cap, EMD, inspection, financing, uh, closing. OK, so just make it nice and easy, easy to read. Because. The listing agent is judging you from the very first moment that they take your phone call. 
I'll tell you that as a listing agent. Right? If I call Susie and I'm like, hey, Susie, how are you? Oh, everything's good. Oh, yeah, I just want to show that property. Okay, great. Let's get that set up. Boom. First interaction. That was great. I go to Susie's listing. Oh, man, the back door's open. Hey, Susie, I'm over here at 123 Anywhere Street. Uh, the back door is like unlocked. Do you want me to lock it? I don't know if it was like that. Or, yeah, if you could lock it, that'd be great. Okay, no, no worries. Boom. I leave the house. I then go, oh, man, Susie, what a great house. You, you got a great listing there. My clients are interested. We're going to look at another couple of properties. If anything comes in, could you please let me know? Sure, no problem. Boom. We go see other properties. The next day, we're going to write something. Hey, Susie, we're getting ready to write this offer. I'm just wondering what matters to the seller most. She goes, you know, I got, I got that call three times in the last price. <laughs> anything else? No. <laughs> right. You know, somebody goes, anything else? I go, uh, shortest closing time. Anything else? Best conditions. Okay, great. So if you give me a cash offer, quick closing, way above asking, I would love it. Okay, great. Okay, perfect. So, but that interaction is everything. Because now if there's multiple offers and I get it from Billy Goat Gruff, the guy that's been fighting me the whole time, it's different, real, really different uh, situation. Okay. <clears throat> so Bomb Bomb or other video embedding CRM. And, uh, I just played that. Hold on. I don't want to see myself like that full screen. Okay. Dub is, is the second option here. And uh, yeah. Dub is not an actually, it's not a full blown platform. What it does is it integrates with other platforms. Okay. But you can text it, social, email, embed, do whatever you want. It's kind of what it looks like. Dub with. Oh, you couldn't even hear it. No. Okay, never mind. Find me in the club with a bottle full of bub while I'm using dub. I don't know. <laughs> okay, here's your free trials. Bomb.jmanseminars.com. Uh, don't worry about the CRM. We all have a CRM. And then dub.jmanseminars.com. Uh, the Bomb Bomb free trial will get you 30 days with additional stuff that I created that you won't find anywhere else. Okay. All right. Escalation clauses. Oh, shoot. I wanted to put like an escalator here as an image or something, and I forgot. <laughs> oh, that's okay. But here's here's what I want to explain. There's a number, and I'm gonna I'm gonna roll through these. Cap or no cap, and I'm not talking like my sons these days. They go no cap, dad, which means don't. I'm not lying. Cap is a cap on the limit of your offer. Okay, so with an escalation clause, and I'll show you a couple as we go through this, but with an escalation clause, let's say uh, Jill has a listing for 500K, and I say I'm gonna, I want to, I'm gonna offer 500K, but I want to go 10,000 over the highest offer, no cap. Okay, no cap means I don't have a cap, a limit on the amount that I that I wanna I, I wanna offer. Cap would be five hundred ten thousand over the highest offer, highest bona fide offer, with a cap of six fifty. Okay, see the difference? Now, yeah, what you have to do is prepare yourself, or not yourself, prepare the buyer. Okay, to say, hey, if we go in, and we tell them what our cap is. What I've done is violated my fiduciary duty of confidentiality, right? You've told me what you're willing to pay, and now I'm sharing that with the listing agent. We may get a counter offer for the cap. And you're like, no, it's an escalation clause. Yes, it is. But I have three options with any offer. Accept it, counter it, or don't respond. So I can counter it at your cap, or I can counter it at somewhere below. Okay, so that's what I mean, but prepare them. Like the only time you deliver bad service is when your client isn't prepared for, for potential outcomes. So I'm always saying, here's what, what we can do. Here's what could happen. What do you think we should do? And they'll say, oh, let's go in no cap. Now, no cap is not a blank check. 
Okay, no cap means that I get a phone call from the agent in most markets that will say, uh, hey, Tati, am I saying that right? Tati? Um, hey, Tati, uh, I just want to say, you know, we're at that property. We started at 500, but there's the highest offer is 750,000. And since you're 10,000 over the highest, that puts you at 760. Is your buyer comfortable with that? And it, you're going to go, ah, hell no. Or <laughs> uh, let me check with the buyer and I'll get back to you. Because many times buyers will say to us, I won't go over this, but if would they lose it for a thousand or two thousand or five thousand in the big scheme of thing in a five five hundred thousand a million dollar property? I don't think so. Monica. So here's my question because that works when you're on the buyer side, right? You propose yeah. to move your cap and et cetera. And then you're on the seller side. They don't have a, a um they don't own you any um what I'm trying to say. Um to show you how many offers they have. But right, for example, you said it's five hundred dollars, right? And then your cap is at six fifty, but with yeah. the ten thousand dollars over the asking price. They don't have a right, I mean, they don't own you a right to show you that they have the prof, uh, uh, offers. They can come back at you and saying we have six fifty. So you're at six sixty. Don't you go against yourself if you're like negotiating for your buyers? Because if they have to disclose that, I understand makes sense. But if I don't think so, seller will disclose that they have other offer at this, you know? Well, here's, and this is where I'm showing you all, this is what an escalation addendum could look like. Okay, this is one that's approved in our state. And <clears throat> if you're exercising an escalation addendum, then there's proof of some sort. And it could be a redacted first couple pages, meaning I'm not going to put the buyer's name on there, but you'll see the price, right? And basically for us, the price is on the second page. So I show you first page, second page, that's it. That's proof enough that there was another offer. Now, but my second sin. Well, you could, if you were unethical, you could lie about anything in the transaction, but I'm, I'm there. Part. These are real forms that are signed by people. And so the other, my second option where I'm saying, I'm going to counter you. I'm not providing any proof because I'm not exercising your escalation clause, right? You said you'll pay 650. Perfect. I send you a counter offer for 650. And you're going to go, well, Jay, where's the proof? Well, no, no, no. We're not doing the escalation clause. Uh, the seller saw that you're willing to pay 650. They will take 650. So that's our counter offer. You can accept it, counter it or not respond. So like you have to think in your head, the win is the property. The win isn't getting them the least amount at least amount of money. Sometimes it is. But when you have a buyer that goes, you say, do whatever it takes to get this house and we're multiple offers, then it, the win is the house. It yeah. works with multiple offers, maybe. I, I, I see your point. I'm still not so 100% convinced if I would just, if I'm trying to get the lowest price for my buyer, I would sh should disclose. It's the but lowest price. I'd Guess what? It's... it's it's guaranteed to be the lowest price possible because I'm not accepting any other price lower. <laughs> it gets to well, be a little are bit. Are like, price lower than the 650? No, like I just, you know, I'm yeah, talking about like. It's guaranteed to be the best price. I guarantee any property on the market in the entire world sold for the best possible price. You know why? Because you can't prove me wrong. It didn't sell twice. It's selling one time and your buyer can get a good deal on a property they don't buy or they can get this house. But what if it's like way over market price? I mean, What's market? Market <laughs> value is what a buyer is willing to pay. Excuse me, Jay, ma'am. Yeah. You know? she, are, Monica, where are you? Are you in Florida? Or are you in New York? California. I am Florida. I am Florida. 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 That's why you're, that's why it's a little different. It's very different from from New York. So um, our addendum is an escalation addendum that we have. Sorry, Jay, man, I would be on camera, but I'm not feeling that great. And I saw okay. this and I wanted to jump on. Um, yeah. But we do have a very simple escalation addendum that we add where just one line here, I, I'll just read it's really quick. Buyer agrees to increase the purchase price 
if there is a bona fide, unexpired, not beyond time for acceptance. Offer from a competing buyer received by an acceptable to seller competing offer. The increase shall be calculated as follows. And then there are areas where we can just add, because obviously we can just mm -hmm. fill in the blanks. You know, it's not like New York where the yeah. attorneys do everything. We don't. Well, so it depends on what, what part of New York, but thank you for that, Lena. So you're welcome you put that in the chat. Could you put that in the chat for me? If you could upload it where it says documents. For, for Florida. Yeah. Put the Florida one in there. Cause the one you're looking at here is not New York. This is actually Ohio, Cincinnati. Oh, cause Ohio. I can't even, I can't even read what's up there. Yeah. But the almost any escalation addendum across the country will have two things. It'll have an escalation amount, which means how much over the highest offer and right. a cap. Right. Let me see if there's something for cap. I don't know because I really don't use this. So let me just look. I just pulled it for you because I said that's probably where there's a little bit of why she's thinking that because obviously you put the customer. That's why I put in there that you put them at a disadvantage. You're not just going to tell them, you know, but if this does if I'm understanding what you guys are talking about, this does not, this will automatically give the buyer an agreement to increase their price, but up to a certain amount. So I think that's yeah. what the cap is, right? That's what you're- Yeah, the, the cap is the maximum amount. Now, no cap or highest price has also been put there in the past. And that was the example I gave where it's not a blank check. The agent's going to call you. Uh, I, I use no cap all the time because I want to get the phone call from, you know, Gina's the listing agent and we would have lost by five grand. And she says, Hey Jay, here's the price. Or if it goes like super over, I can, I have the option to decline it. I'm not going to take that. She can go, okay, go with the highest offer. Cause I don't think my buyer wants to go that high, but I can still let the buyer know, Hey, here's what it was. It gives them some sort of power in a powerless transaction, right? When there's multiple offers, like they feel like they don't have anything to negotiate on. And at least they have the power to say no, to walk away uh, if, if you know what it is. Right. Okay. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I just wanted, uh, here's kind of. That's why I brought it up so that it wouldn't keep going. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I appreciate that. You know, and, because it could be and, and I think part of it, thank you, Lena. Uh, part of it is that, you're so used to thinking the win is the lowest possible price. The win is negotiating on price. We have heard this in role play again and again, where somebody goes, well, I can get it for less for my buyer, but the buyer's willing to take it. The buyer's willing to take it. The buyer is willing to take it and you're in the way saying, no, 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 don't take it. I can get it for less. Well, what happens if you don't and they lose out because you wanted to save them. You wanted to look like a superhero. The hero is the person who gets them the house, folks. Okay, keep that in your in, in in your mind. Okay, here's just these are three different ones that are written by agents. Uh, the first one is simple: buyer's offer will be two thousand over highest bona fide offer. Redacted first and second pages to be provided as proof of highest offer. Okay, second one: is, should a competing offer be submitted prior to seller tony approval, the buyer will increase their purchase price by. And then the third one wants to be an attorney when they grow up. Like just wrote too much here. I won't would never recommend. Um, yeah, well, it's a Florida form, but you can, they're all the same, Andy. I have all the forms. They're all very much the same. Okay. Hey, uh, just old <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I got you. You know, I am not an attorney. I am not playing one in this recording right now, folks. Okay. All right. Perfect. I'm giving you my opinion as a real estate expert in buyer representation, old fashioned service that exceeds expectation. Um, I believe in me. This is what you should say. Exclusive right to represent, right? There's two ways you can represent uh, in most parts of the country. Florida, you also have, you can be a transactional agent. I understand. Uh, but client or customer, a customer is a person who wants to buy real estate, but is not represented by an agent. They do not establish any kind of agency relationship with the real estate agent. A client needs to sign an agreement or in New York state and some other states, you can have what's called an implied agency relationship, which means if I'm working with you as a buyer's agent and you're treating me as a buyer's agent, that is an implied agency relationship. However, 
if they go and buy something on a Sunday without you, it's harder to prove that you are their buyer's agent. I think professionals get things signed. You would never take a listing without a listing agreement. So why would you take a buyer without a buyer's agreement, right? Think of it as listing buyers. Like I'm going on a buyer listing appointment. <laughs> it's very different when you start thinking of it that way, right? When we start comparing side by side, uh, client or customer, client, advice on pricing, prepare a CMA, advice on how to much to offer it, any known information on previous offers, provide information on positions, take, disclose any information, on, right? And then you go to customer, information about available properties, show buyer available properties, disclose any known defects. And what I would do, and, and it's really, if you get pushback, and actually I'm going to give you a what to say, I'd have 60 plus uh, buyer related objections of what to say, uh, but make a list of all the things that you do. And this is just called a Ben Franklin close for those of you that were on my, my door knocking class. The Ben Franklin close is where you list pros and cons, pros on one side, cons on the other pros. Here's everything that I'll do. I'll door knock. I'll send out postcards. I'll work in office exclusives. I'll work on expired listings. I'll do this. And I keep on going. And then as a customer, well, I got to deal with you fairly and honestly. I'm not going to do any of the other things. Okay. Buyer presentations. Now, Florida, you have a, uh, your marketing department in Florida has a buyer presentation. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. Um, I know Andy has it. Andy, could you upload it for me, please? And uh, what I wanted, you're not going to use this in, in its entirety. I, I think I'm going to give you a place to start from, but you do have to incorporate. Oh, man, I'm looking at my AI presenter there. His mouth, his face is messed up. The guy on stage. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's a starting point, right? And you can ask AI, but I want you to really load it up with not just what our company does better, but then it's what does Monica, what does Tatiana, what does Eric, what does Andy, what does Gina, what does, right? What do you all individually do better? We have 7,000 agents. There's, there is the potential that there might be another buyer's agent you're going against within the company. And if you all have, you have the same buyer's presentation, you better have some other talking points, right? Be able to, to say, well, you know, what you do. But here's three tools uh, that I like that use AI to help you. Uh, Beautiful.ai is the first. I create beautiful presentations in there, uh, but you could actually create a presentation. Uh, I would go into chat GPT. Oh, did you win? You won, Susie, right? I did. Let's pop, pop that card. I felt bad because he was also a role play partner. Well, I don't feel bad. I, it's how I take care of my kids and feed my family. Survival the fittest, folks. Okay. Um, but beautiful.ai is the first one. And I'll, I'll put these links in here for you. Beautiful. And you could, uh, we don't have a lot of time left in today's session. Maybe I'll show you in the next one. But now actually that's what I'm going to do. My, my live stream this Friday is going to be about creating buyer presentations. So tune in on Friday at 9 a.m. on J-Man Speaks. Um, but you can go into GPT and say, I want to create a, a buyer presentation, right? Can you help me to outline each slide? What should a good buyer presentation include? And it'll say, okay, now give me a brief description of each slide and an image suggestion. I take that, I copy it, and then I paste it into one of these uh, AI creators. Yeah, totally. <laughs> You're welcome, Lena. Uh, a lot of this, of course, last year or, yeah, last year around this time, I would have said, here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to outline all the things that we're going to put in our presentation, and then we're going to have to create it. Well, AI gives you just the hardest part is getting started and outlining something and then finding good images and things, resources to put in there. And what I, what I would encourage you to do is like, once you think you're done, ask yourself, what else? What else can I add, right? What else can I add to this to make it better? And then once you do that, say, what else? 
And then once you do that, one more time, say, what else can I add to this? So that when I'm done, they're going to go, where do I sign? Because you are the greatest buyer's agent that ever lived. That's, that's how you have to feel about it. I mean, that's how passionate I am. Uh, Canva.app. And then Canva, for my Canva users, you can go right into presentations. They have an AI presentation creator. They ask you, what, what is your presentation about? You can say exclusive buyer representation. You choose a template. Boom. They make it. Okay, I just got my Canva charge at this 120 bucks a year. I think that's what it was. Well worth it. Here is the second one. Gamma.app. Okay. All right. Buyer consultation is all about showing your value and listening to what they want, right? What matters most to you as a buyer? Let's fast forward and you're turning the key. You're turning the key, the key into your dream home. What does that experience look like from start to finish? And then just listen. They're telling you how to provide good service, right? Often, what are we doing? Here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. And then they're like, I don't know if I want half that stuff, right? I had a loan originator who was trying to win over my business. And if I hadn't been so friendly, he would have lost it. He goes, well, I'll give, I will call you every day and give you updates uh, on any files that you have, where they are in the process. <laughs> I said, please do not. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, I don't want to hear from you unless there's a problem. Now, my wife is a high C and he, he told, oh, I'll call you every day and give you all the you know updates on every file that we have going on. She was like, that's excellent. I would love to have an update every day because she likes the details. Me, I'm just like, yo, I just want to know if something's on fire. That's it. You, I trust you to handle everything else. Okay, so listen to what they want, give them the information, and let them know that truly what this is, right? Because I think, I'm gonna move myself back over here. What, what we have to overcome is the fact that they feel, and year over year, NAR profiles home buyers and home sellers. And year over year, we rank around the 29 percentile, meaning 29% of people that we first meet trust us, okay? It's just above car sales people. And so you have to realize perception is reality. They think that we're, we would say whatever it takes to get a deal. And I, I think that that's in the beginning, that's the important part of the process to say like, you know, this is what I do. Our mission is, you know, if you don't have your mission statement, uh, explaining what it is you do and, and why you do it. But for us, it's we, we always choose relationships over transactions, truly. Okay, Lena, um, keep it or put it in the Q&A section rather than the chat and I'll see it and we'll be ready to talk about it at the end. Got okay, a buyer's agency agreement is a written agency agreement between the buyer and the real estate broker in which they agree that the broker will be paid a commission when the buyer purchases real estate. Okay, exclusive buyer agency agreement. I'm going to go through this in three parts just so this is a general agreement. Don't tell me yours is different in your state. Of course it is, okay? I'm just telling you the general parts of an agreement. Uh, the buyer's name should be on there. The buyer's real names, okay? Not an LLC. Um, there was case law with Taylor Swift uh, buying a property after it was shown to one of her people. They bought it in an LLC and it turned out it was an exclusive off-market listing. We had an exclusive buyer's agency agreement and there was a big lawsuit, right? If, you're, if somebody's buying a 20, 30, 50 million dollar property, there's a lot of commission at stake. That's something that will go to court, okay? So starting with the agreement, buyer purchaser, okay? Called the broker. That's us, represented by agent, that's you. Agreement period. Now, this is where some people go, oh, well, they didn't wanna sign it because I put in a year in there. If I get any pushback, let's say uh, Joshua Marks, I'm just gonna use you as an example because you're not on camera and my brother's name is Joshua. Uh, so Joshua doesn't, doesn't wanna sign a long-term agreement. He doesn't wanna sign a 30-day agreement, but we're gonna go out and look at houses. I can say, Josh, is it okay if we just did just for today? And what do you mean? Just for today. Anything that I show you, if you end up buying it, 
there is uh, there is some compensation that's due. Is that fair? Yeah. And if tomorrow you decide that it was a good experience today, we can talk about extending that. Because maybe I'm not sure if I want to work with you. Ha, 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 ha. If that's the truth. <laughs> okay. So it has to have a period. Broker's obligations, it outlines like what you will do. Use diligence in locating a property. Use professional knowledge. Assist client throughout the transaction. Present the purchase offer to the seller or the seller's agent. Okay. Present the purchase offer, which means if your buyer comes to you and says, I want you to offer this, you have a duty to obey. You can counsel them and say, well, based on my expertise, here's what I feel we should write the offer and submit it. Okay, no problem. I'll do it to the best of my ability. I do the same thing. I'll do the same presentation, same level, everything. I'm going to do the best I can to get that offer accepted. Have I had clients write unreasonable offers? Yeah, you're not in, re you're not in real estate if you don't have a client write an unreasonable offer at some point. The point is write it. Okay, sometimes they have to get things rejected or lose out on a property before they realize the value of listening to what you say. Okay, now, client specification, specification, specifications. English is my first language, I promise. Uh, client desires, desires to purchase, exchange, or lease real property located in the county of. Okay, if you're going to be searching in multiple counties, put multiple counties, because like I live in Monroe County. If I didn't put uh, if they then purchase in Erie County, which is where the Buffalo Bills play, uh, then technically they're not violating the contract, right? So if you're in Nassau County, right on the border, and they might squeak into Suffolk, I would put Nassau, Suffolk, and Queens for that matter, if you're right in the middle of Nassau. You never know, okay? Then put uh, residential, you know, if they're looking for residential one, four, one to four family, or residential investment, I would put anything residential really. And then client will work exclusively with the agent for the purchase, furnish agent with relevant personal financial information and all communications with other real estate agents. Notify the agents, look, it's in caps. Notify the agents that the client has entered into this buyer agency contract with agent, okay? I want you to know if you go to an open house and somebody says, are you working with an agent? Yes, J-Man is my guy. Okay, Here, actually, here's a stack of business cards. Take them with you so if anybody asks you, you throw my business card in their face. Nicely. Just kidding. Don't throw it at them. Just put it on the table and say, here's my agent. You don't even have to sign anything at their open house. Have them call me with any questions. Okay? Best practices. That's what I always do. Okay, now, compensation. Let me see where you're at. Oh, Eric, do you have a question? Yeah, I didn't want to get into the whole discussion about using these, but is it safe, is it fair to say that it depends on the market you're in, what percentage use or do not use exclusive, these exclusive agreements? Yeah, I would say it depends. And I would, I would say it's a, it's a choice that any agent can make. Some states, it's required. Like Connecticut, where Evangela is, she's not here today, but Every she has to have an exclusive of every buyer that she works with. It's the law. And I wish it was required everywhere. I well, wish. But Eric, guess what? You can run your business the way you want. You can say every buyer that I work with is going to sign one. You can say that. You can make that choice today. Okay. I will. Okay. So compensation. Okay. If the property is listed with a real estate company broker, will accept a fee equal. Being offered to the cooperation, but in any any event, not less than you put your percentage here of the purchase price of the property or a flat fee of. Flat fee isn't typically used. Uh, when I first started, I was doing a lot of investment properties, and we would sell, sell things under $50,000, which then the commission would be less than $3,000, and then our flat fee would be $3,000 because then under fifty would be less than three less than 3%. Right? That's the only time I've ever used uh, a flat fee. Whoops. I'm using my mouse too often. I'm going to go back over here. Uh, it says, if such fee or any portion is that paid by the seller or the seller's agent as convenient to the transaction, the client will be credited by broker for the amount paid, right? So if it's paid by the seller, guess what? You don't have to pay that, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer. However, if it doesn't match or if it isn't, then this is part of your closing costs. You mean I have to pay that out of pocket? Yes. 
I'm not hiding from this because you're worth it, right? I'm hearing like Beyonce in the background, like, baby, you're worth it. Like, you just gotta, you gotta believe. And after you've established that value, they're gonna have no problem, okay? If such fee or any portion thereof is paid by the seller's gonna then the client will be credited. Away. Other compensation agreement, typically not that. If client within blank months of the termination of this agreement, okay, this is similar to, you have this on your listing agreements. If the seller, within a certain amount of time sells it to somebody that you procured from the marketing efforts that you that you did, the commission still do. Same thing, this is to protect you as a buyer's agent if they go, you know, Tiffany's my buyer and she goes to a, a FISBO that I showed her and, and the FISBO says, hey, come back after your contract expires. You can save 3%. And then Tiffany tries that, waits till the day after, goes and writes an offer, I have a list of all the properties I showed her. I see that going on record and she, okay, then Tiffany and I have to have a conversation. Okay, when buyers cheat, uh, we're gonna finish off on, on this part here for today. But you see like, here's the agent in the background in the street going by the coffee shop going, oh shoot, the buyer's meeting with another agent. Okay, uh, when that happens most often, two, two instances, number one, new construction. You get a call, you have a great relationship with your with your client, and what do they do on a Sunday? It's a beautiful sunny day. They go to open houses, right? They go, oh my gosh, oh, they call. Oh, guess what? Katie, great news, right? Katie's phone rings. Oh, well, what's that? We got a house. And then Katie's like, oh, that's weird, because we were not looking at houses. Oh, well, we went into a, we went into a, a new subdivision it was really nice and they had this lovely model home and you know the the agent that was there said we don't need an agent that she was the builder's rep and actually if they, they didn't have an agent that they would give me a discount on upgrades and then listen to this we got to pick the lot where we were going to build our dream home you're done okay and in many many states if you if you haven't registered your client within those subdivisions, you're also done. So what I would do, uh, it's a conversation you have with the buyer. Are you thinking about building? No. Have you ever thought about building? No. Okay. Well, what usually happens is we look at everything that's existing and you're not happy with us out there and then you decide to build. So let me just plan ahead. It doesn't mean you have to, and I'm going to register my buyer at every single subdivision that they could possibly walk into in the three county area. And you're like, that may be excessive. It is until it isn't right. Meaning that builder says, oh, your buyer walked through. You had already registered them. Uh, they reserved this lot. You're going to get paid. Boom. Perfect. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to be there throughout that process. And I explained to the buyer as part of my buyer presentation that new construction is one of the only transactions where you can walk in at this price and walk out much higher. You need me to look out for your best interest to make sure that you're you know, making the right updates and staying within your budget. That builder's agent works for the builder. Their job is to get them the most money possible. So you ask them, should we make these upgrades or improvements? They're going to go yes, yes, and yes. And model homes are designed to do that. Second time, for sale by owner, right? They go, for sale by owner? What's that? Well, they're going to appeal to the larceny in your soul. What does that mean? Well, it's like the devil on your shoulder that's going to say, hey, uh, you know, come to me. Forget your agent. You don't have to worry about it. And this is in a market where there isn't a lot of inventory. This is what happens. They hear through the grapevine, somebody at work knows someone who knows someone who's selling their house on their own. Then they go, they make a deal. They don't need you. Okay. And many times this is when they pay. And I'll give examples. Like if you've ever represented somebody in a for sale by owner transaction, the value that you provide, tell a relative story on how that works. Uh, but I know quite often for sale by owners can sell for above market value because a buyer's agent feels like they're getting a deal and they have nothing to compare it against because they don't have a buyer's agent. All they know is there's no competition and they're willing to write an offer on it, right? They don't know how to negotiate. It's, it's you know, buyer to seller. Neither one of them know how to negotiate. Uh, it's terrible. All right. Um, scan that. That's going to give you your parting gift. And then I'm going to answer some questions. Let's 
let's see. Do we have any question? Any question? Okay, Lena, you had a question. What do you got? Or did I answer it? It's going to take a while, Jay. So don't worry about it, really. Well, this is the end of the show until yeah, Thursday. I, I I don't want it to to go over for you. So it really. Now, Lena, now now you have to ask the question. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, and it only because this has to do with buyers um, and being the best buyer's agent, right? I yes. was referred um, a customer the other day and we were going over, you know, a few properties that came up on the market that I had sent her. I set up the, the, um, all the properties to go to her, you know, um, in the area that she wanted. And because her schedule is so tight, I haven't been able to actually meet her but her friend is a good customer of mine. So um, of course, all we have is loyalty, right? When you're a buyer's agent um, and hope that they have that if we don't have that form signed, right? Um, well, the other yesterday, actually, she we were gonna go look at a property and I t I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not feeling well. We were supposed That's to good. go and see a property on Sunday and she decided to send her mother with another agent to go look at the property. Now, there's a lot more to that. I I went through the property, got all the information from the condo association. The agent and I like majorly clicked. Um, he told me everything about the community. Well, I get a phone call from that agent, the listing agent. And that's when you know you did make a good connection. Yeah. That that agent called me and said, Hey, Lena, you know, I had uh, a lady here. So Miriam, whatever, um, that was here. And it just sounded too much like your buyer. Well, actually, I sent a message to her because I was a little bit, of course, I'm upset, right? So I send her a message nicely, you know, and I said, Hey, you know, I said, is your mom's name, whatever. And she said, yes. And I said, well, the agent, you know, called me and told me that you had seen it. So this is all through text, not even talking because she can't get on the phone because of work. Um, so she said, yes, yeah, she insisted and she wanted to see it. She didn't like it, thank goodness. But, you know, I, I guess being in the business so long, I'm always a yes person and I always adjust my schedule for the buyer. Uh, cause anybody who says, or at least in my case, that says that we were, we have our best schedules. No, I always schedule around my buyer. I always try to convenience them, you know, and being in it so long, I kind of felt like, you know, should I just drop her? I mean, obviously I, I need the money. I don't want to drop her. Right. Yeah. Should I just drop her or should I try to get that. I kind of see that the loyalty is not there from her. She knew how important it was for me to meet her because I'd never met her. And I think that the person buying it should be the one looking at the property, right? So why should I go out yeah. there three times to, to look at this property? Well, let's, let's unpack this. Yes. There's much here. To talk I told about. you. <laughs> no, no. I love it. I love it because it's a real life scenario and we want to help you with this. So first things first is I would I would schedule to meet her in person, whether I prefer it to be at the office on your turf, right? That's your home turf, if you will. Uh, if it had to be via Zoom because of her crazy work schedule, that's okay too. Uh, did you do a buyer presentation with her? I not, no, not the way no. I, I normally would. Right. No, I was on the phone. I spent a lot of time with her, so it doesn't right. regard. Well, time time working does not mean we've explained our value, right? Like time. Oh, I think I did. Agent. No, I think I did though. I'm sorry. I did. And that's why she called me to tell rather sent me that message to say that her mother insisted on seeing it. This agent. Yeah, well, I, I, I think you could have, here's what I'll say. The best way for me to put this. I don't think you establish enough of a value because she would have, she would have known that she should do nothing without you because you're the expert that she hired. Right. And is it, is it normal for people to send look at millennials? I'll say this that have helicopter parents, the parents 
quite often look at properties first. I've had that. I, I had a mom that looked at all the houses and then she, she called the son and said, you're writing an offer on this. And that was when I met him for the I very first time. That. I should have done yeah. that. Absolutely. And, and, and I, well, I feel bad that I didn't. I it's not too late to though. That. It's not too late. I, I think just schedule another meeting. Uh, and like I said, at the office just say, you know, I feel bad because maybe I didn't explain everything that I do for you and the value that I can provide. And then start at the very beginning and just say, here's all the things with you. And you don't ever want to see properties without me. You know why? Because I'm looking out for your best interests. Right. There's nobody better for me or better for you than me. Okay. And then go into all the things that, that, that you do. You're going to, with everything we're talking about here in this session, uh, to redefine that value and then get an exclusive right to represent signed. Okay, because it's always the people that you feel you have the best relationship with. They call you on a Sunday. I've, 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 I have I've, a lot of cousins. I still almost stopped working with family because they're always like, oh, cuz, oh, it's all good. You know, uh, I wrote an offer with somebody else. And I was like, what? Part of me? Okay, and the other part, if you've been doing this a long time, Lena, like you said, you've been doing this a long time, is they feel like they don't want to bother us. And that's why... They called another agent or that's why they went to the open or that's why they they just didn't want to bother us and that's us they value us but then they almost think like we're unapproachable and uh they don't want to want to bother just like you said like you don't want me to stay after to to help you with this question it's a similar thing right i'm here to help you that's okay that's what i do and yeah. it's the same thing like I they wouldn't want to excuse me because i think yeah I do believe, I don't think that it was my, my fault there because she did tell me that she wanted her mother to see the properties first. So my question was direct to you because I know I could get everybody's opinion and I appreciate everybody's opinion, but I didn't want it to drag um, yeah. and go longer, but was, I should have maybe made the introduction with her mom and made a good impression with her mother and her mother would have had no doubt but to use me. But instead, she probably talked to her mother and her mother said, well, no, I'm going to get somebody to take me there. You yeah. know, I was just trying to be the, you know, there's a lot. The listing agent told me the gentleman had was handicapped. He had to come out with his wheelchair. He didn't want to have to do it twice. So he appreciated if I went with both of them. So, you know, there was a little bit more. It wasn't just I said no to her mother, you know, but mm -hmm. I guess in this case, I I should have. Maybe I, I should have done that. It's okay. It's, uh, we learn. <clears throat> For me, I, I never have negative experiences. I just have learning opportunities, right? I, I look at it and I say, man, that shouldn't happen ever again. Exactly. Thank like, you. I, I'm telling you real life stories when I say people called me and said, I bought, you know, I'm, I'm building a house or I went through an open, or I found a fizz built. All of those things have happened to me at least once in the last 19 years. And, and to stop that from happening, I get exclusive signed every time because that's important to me. And, and I'm a professional just like all of you. And that's how you should feel about it. Tracy, do you have a question? Okay, you unmuted. Any other questions? Here's uh, your... Your assignment, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to work on your unique value proposition uh, that we talked about and start to create your buyer presentation. Start to, if you have it complete by the next session, we're going to highlight you as the best buyer's agent that ever lived. Uh, <laughs> and in the next session, I also get into, I'm going to give you like a little bit of a case study, like uh, a property. I'm going to tell you about the market. And then you're, we're going to break up into groups and you're going to write the best possible offer. And then we're going to compare the three offers or four offers or five offers and see which one you think is best and why it just as like a learning opportunity. Cause I feel like I could talk about offers all day. If you haven't written one yet uh, or enough, many of them yet, then what I would say is you're all welcome. Uh, but take a listing agent out in your office for lunch or coffee. They know more about what offers, what buyers are writing or buyers agents are writing as far as offers are concerned in your market. They're the best people to learn from. Because if they get 5, 10, 15 offers on a listing, you know what people are thinking after a few listings.
Okay. Uh, next session of this training is Thursday, one o'clock, one to two thirty. Thursday, same great station, Z double O M. Uh, just could register or just show up. Either way, I'm fine. Okay. If you got any questions in the meantime, please best way to reach me: Facebook Messenger, Instagram DM. Uh, if that doesn't work, that that'll work. That's the best way to reach me. If if you want to wait for a, a reply, send me an email. It'll be a while, but I'll eventually get to it. Okay, Jeremiah J. Manero, National Trainer Douglas Hellman. Make it a great day, folks.